I thank God for being a ever present help in the hour of need. He has been our rock and our anchor. My prayer is that we hold on to him as we start this new phase of life. He remains God, working in all things together for our good. I want to thank the government of Uganda, led by His Excellency, the World Captain Seveni, and the UPDF Fraganti for all the support we have received in this season. We are grateful. I thank the medical teams of Murago and Nairobi hospitals, led by Dr. Madin and Professor Vita, respectively. They went above and beyond in assuring that they got the best treatment. I would like to appreciate the team from the Uganda Embassy in Kenya who rendered their support to us throughout our stay in Nairobi. I also thank Enos and Connie Senior for coming alongside us and walking this journey with us. It was not an easy one. Enos stood by his brother from the time he was admitted in hospital till the end. There are no words to express our gratitude. May God reach the bless you and your family. A very special thanks to you, to Madame Sakina Juma who was a good saint to us every step of the way while in Nairobi. May God abundantly bless you. I thank my children for taking care of their father from the time he started feeling unwell to the time we went to hospital. He was showed so much love. All worked as a team and the support system to me and to each other. Special thanks to Dawdi and Brenda Chituma for coming well with the Nairobi team. I thank the teams of prayer warriors who interceded for A. We felt the love, support of people from all walks of life. I would like in a special way to thank the Greater Kampala Revival Fellowship for keeping the fire on the altar burning. We opened our home to Kampala Revival Fellowship, which passed the right TV, which is currently streaming on YouTube. I also thank everyone who called us, sent us messages, who we were overwhelmed with the show of love from each and every one of you. We are eternally grateful. I would like to appreciate those who traveled to Nairobi to see us. They were a source of great encouragement, love, and support. Honorable Senide and Colonel Grace Chumisha, his business partners, Dora Chidende, Mariam Gamba, and Jerry Sabuni, my cousins, I will forever be grateful. Jerry Sabuni, my cousin, was my matron. When Jerry was a girl, Siblings were Eli, Avakuza were now Umchara Erna Mushutasi, Wumyanum Kuru, Umchara Jane Lechera, Mkazan of Noishant or Noishant, who were to be Raha Nakasiro, Wakabumanawa, and Abumra. In the Vasa, Mumhambabum Kosiri. I'd like to thank our in-laws, Honorary Bokosho's family, the Kawamara family, the Muhebo family, the Mawati family, for giving us wonderful children who have been an invaluable addition to the family.
Eli loved God. Eli loved his country. Eli loved the Yudidia. Eli loved his family. And he meant the support. His love never regret for all this. He undertook tasks in different offices he served with passion, diligence, consistency, and integrity. He was a person who always stood for truth and fairness at whatever cost. Whether in office or out of it, he remained loyal and true to his values and the values of the revolution. He used to tell us about three things they wished for when they were in the Liberation War. One, for the war to end in victory. Two, to be among the lucky ones to see the victory. Three, for God to give them a family and children. God granted them. God granted him all the things. <laughs> we were blessed with children and even grandchildren. What a blessing. He loved art and fashion, music and nature. He was able to pursue these passions alongside his official duties. He always said, do what you love, love what you do, do it to the best, and let go do the rest. And he did exactly that. I was blessed to have him as my husband and the father of our children. We are proud of the great legacy he has left behind, which will never be erased. In the 35 years that he gave us, I saw him grow in his work with Christ. He was very bold in testifying about what God had done in his life and had committed to be an evangelist in his latter years. He had the conviction, he had the conviction that what would liberate humanity was having a personal relationship with Christ, which would transform the individual, the family unit, the nation, and the world at large. Whenever he got an opportunity to speak, be it at a wedding, you know, or any other gathering, he would boldly share the gospel. He would say that for him, he was ready to die, and would challenge anyone to get prepared. He would add that this should be a celebration of the life we have lived. He looked at for so many children, put them through school, or they went to university. We have PhD, masters, degree holders in Oriya Kavyapath. I would like to ask all who had gone through our home to stand up. But it's already dark, I don't think people were able to see you. But these are just a sample of many children he took care of. I don't know whether non choir is around. That is our PhD holder from Australia. Is non choir around? Is there? Is there? <laughs> and he is now the pension advisor on agriculture. He was intentional in befriending his children. All children truly experience their father's love, care, guidance, and provision. He always made time for them, despite his busy schedules. He had a big and a generous heart. Our PH holder, Dr. Betty Nampaya, 
Bridge. Rachel, when we, when he came to our home, he was in T4. When she came to our home, she was in T4. And now she's in T4. He's a doctor. He's a dementia advisor in a good fashion. He had a big and a generous heart. He loved the cows. They were his prized possession. And that was the gift he would give to his relatives, friends, and universities, graduates, to mention but a few. In his period of sickness, as we interceded through the passage of Hezekiah, we were reminded that God had already added more than 15 years to his long life long ago. Through the death and the experiences he encountered in his life, struck by lightning, beaten by a snake, shot in the head, but he survived through it all. I can confidently say he lived a fruitful, happy, and a fulfilling life. He always told us he was grateful to God for granting him all he desired and wished for in his life. I would like to thank God for the life of my amazing husband, Eddie. He was a unique and a very rare human being who did things in his own way. He shared a fulfilling life together with the ups and downs, but God kept us on course. Here we are at the end of our verse, till death do us part. We will always be grateful to God for giving blessing to us, and we will miss him deeply. I call upon all our children to be firm in the Lord, stay united, keep his legacy of love. Rest in angels, my beloved day. I'm sure we will meet again. Thank you all once again for coming to be with us during this beautiful time. Thank you.